So hello guys, just thought I'd make a quick video about this new model of siren I've made. It is based on a Gents 1474. I think I said that right, did I? It's a 1474, isn't it? Yeah, 1474 siren. So the kind of the original World War II air raid siren. It was the, I think it was the first design. I could be wrong about that now for, for, for England anyway. But uh, that's what it's based on. So I have tried to recreate it as accurately as possible, as you can see here. Tried to get all of the little details and I got a lot of the details out of this book here, which I bought. It's a great book. If you have any interest in air raid sirens and defense sirens and tornado sirens, I'd highly recommend it. But um, it had enough pictures of this siren in it and even a drawing with some dimensions that I was able to get everything I needed to make as accurate a model as I possibly could. So like that included little details like these little, uh, like these are kind of imitation screws that would have originally been used to hold these this motor together so i put them there to try to get it looking correct and also the fact that this siren actually has uh, straight rotor uh, blades so unlike my other models that you'd be familiar with or something like this one this is off the bigger siren if you can see the rotor blades they kind of they're, they're angled to try cut through the air and force the air out better but in this design they were straight so which is probably a bit less efficient but it still works uh, pretty well and as you can see they're kind of just they stop with a kind of a T T shape and that forms the chopper so no well actually it's, it's it's I think it's slightly louder than the normal little sirens that I make due to the fact that the rotors are slightly bigger bigger in diameter a few millimeters bigger so it uh, works quite well quite happy with it Um. The stand is glued on, it's just like the original was welded on, so this is glued on and that works okay, as you can see there. Um, the uh, the end, end caps are held on with eight tiny, the, what are they, 1.7mm by 4mm stainless steel self-tapping screws, which is just better better than trying to um, trying to put, that's, that's an old uh, stator I made there. As you can see, I tried to use the three millimeter screws that I normally use, but there's just there's not enough room for it. So no, they, they look grand. And um, the trickiest part to make was actually the motor because it uh, needs a good bit of work. As you can see, I have this uh, kind of assembly. So that's that's what that's this bit here. And as you can see, it's one of my standard shaded pole motors inside of it. But you'll notice a problem. There's a shaft coming out that end. And as you can see, the shaft in there is way too short. So there was no hope of that coming out the other end. So what had to be done was the motor. So that, that little motor had to be taken apart. And this is the part in the middle, uh, the rotor that spins around. It, uh, so I had to tap, I had to put this in a vise and tap this original shaft out of it. And then hammer in this, it's a piece of four millimeter stainless steel shaft that I got. I ordered it longer than I needed and then trimmed it down to size later. So I know what size it is now, but so that had to be tapped in and then glued in place so that this would have a longer shaft. And that's now how we're able to get this to the correct dimensions because it would have been way too short with the original shaft. So that was quite a bit of work to try to get the right size shaft because obviously these are just little kind of sleeve bearings in these motors. So they're fairly, you need to have fairly good tolerances to get them to run correctly. If it's too tight, it'll barely spin. If it's too loose, it'll just wobble around and the motor won't run, run properly at all but i have it figured out fairly well as you can see i've um cut a thread into the end of that one i'm going to try have these rotors held on with um with little nuts rather than just having to push down because i don't really like that you can't remove them once they're pushed on i mean you can but it's a lot trickier than it would be if you just be able to screw them off so that's what i'm trying for this model so yeah there's a bit bit of work on into making this and getting the dimensions right but i'm pretty happy with how it turned out sounds great so it's uh it's not it's not it's certainly not quiet anyway but it's not dangerously loud or anything like that so we'll give it a test run now and just before i do test run it i should give you the usual warning that this does run on 230 volts ac 50 hertz which is extremely dangerous so unless you really know what you're doing and if you know if, if you want to try build one of these or if you buy one unless you really know what you're doing just don't go near just sit back watch and enjoy because this kind of voltage is absolutely lethal it will kill you if you handle it wrong in fact even if you don't handle it wrong it could still kill you so just unless you really know what you're doing just stay away from it you'll be much better off but anyway 
without further ado, we shall give it a test run now. So we'll do um, three short blasts and then an all clear. So three, two, one. So there you have it. As you can hear, it sounds quite good. It sounds pretty like pretty like the real thing, from what I've heard anyway. So quite happy with how that turned out. Just one thing I forgot to mention is, as I said, because one of these motors is in, is it's uh, inside these plastic casings, there's obviously not going to be much air getting at it. So I thought of that, and as you can see, there's just enough space in here. It's about I think what is it? There's fifteen millimeters from here to that kind of support. And these motors actually came with little uh, cooling fans. They, they they press fit onto the shaft. So there's actually just enough room to press fit one of those cooling fans onto the shaft. So it actually sucks air in this end, blows out that end, cools the motor down. So quite happy with that. And how that works is you see these end bells here, these end plates, end caps. I've designed them so that there is ventilation channels. So these, these kind of... Uh, channels these little slots here they let in enough air and it sucks it in one end and blows it out the other so it works great and it keeps it cool although i still would only recommend running it for three minutes at a time with a 10 minute cool down period just for safety but uh, i hope you all enjoyed that um i will be selling this iron although in smaller quantities than the standard one because it is it is quite tricky to um there's quite a lot of work going into it, uh, but unless I can, uh, though I will try find a more streamlined way of doing it. So it'll just be, this one won't be going up for sale as often, but it will be going up for sale eventually. So yeah, uh, pro progress with the shutters is coming along well. I've finally got the design that I want sorted and all I'm waiting for now is components for the uh, control boxes to actually control the shutters. Uh, and once they are built, I can start putting them up for sale. You'll either be able to buy a set of shutters for your siren uh, which you can fit yourself and you'll you'll have the choice then of buying a control box with them uh, because obviously you don't if you get an arduino or whatever you know you'll be able to come up you, a lot of people will be able to come up with their own circuits to actually drive the shutters that they want so they don't need to buy a control box but you'll have the option to buy one if you need it and then there'll be another option of course a, si a siren with shutters already installed and then of course the option to buy a control box with that as well and that control box will have options for adjusting the speed, so how quickly the uh, shutters cycle on and off, uh, so how, how fast and how long they do that. And then also, if you want like a grey signal, so it's just a pulse where they both open and close at the same time, or a high, a, low, a high and low signal. And then you'll have the option of like all clear, which is just continuous and then alert, which will be either the high or low or the grey signal. So... Once they're built, uh, the shutters will go on sale. So, but anyway, I hope you's hope you's enjoyed that, and then uh, there will be a video coming up soon on the big siren. As you can see, it is um, these rotors are they're not uh, <laughs> there's, there's there's one beside the actual siren. This 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 won't really be a toy as such. It'll be more. I mean, it's literally going to be like a third scale of the uh, of the real thing. So, and it, you will need hear, hearing protection for it. So there will be an update video coming in that soon. But I hope you all enjoyed this one. So let me know what you think.
Thank you. Bye-bye.